welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar we are studying ach sandhi for some time now which is vowel sandhi we stated that there are two types of classes of ach sandhi first one being ekasthanik ekadesha and the second one being dvisthanik ekadesha ekasthanik ekadesha stands for one sthani and one adesha one substituent and one substitute one substitute coming in place of one substituent and dvisthanik ekadesha stands for two substituents and one substitute one substitute replacing two substituents this we shall study later right now we are focusing on ekasthanika ekadesha and we stated that there are two instances of this ekasthanika ekadesha the first one is yan sandhi and the second one is ayavayav sandhi we have already studied yan sandhi in detail and we have been studying the second instance of ekasthanika ekadesha namely ayavayav sandhi we continue studying this ayavayav sandhi even in this particular lecture the ekasthanika ekadesha as we saw earlier can be diagrammatically represented in this particular fashion as shown on the slide it is important to remember that this ekasthanika ekadesha is stated in the ashtadhyayi in the section from 6172 onwards up to 6183 and its diagrammatic representation is of this kind where you have a followed immediately by b in close proximity that means a and b are both in the samhita mode and then a is substituted by c a is the sthani c is the adesh ek sthani ek adesh b is the nimitta so in the right hand side environment of b a is substituted by c so a plus b is the input and c plus b is the output now we are studying ayavayav sandhi first we studied the sutra which states ayavayav sandhi which is echo ayavayavah then we also studied the uddeshya vidheya bhav and the sutra prescribing this uddeshya vidheya bhav in the ashtadhyayi in the system of paninian grammar namely anudit savarnasya cha pratyayah then after the application of this particular sutra to echo ayavayavah we noted down the template examples of this particular sutra and this particular type of sandhi then we took concrete specific examples to explain ayavayav sandhi where i av i and av are the substitutes in place of a o i and au respectively then we studied some additional rules where the right hand side environment is not vowels is the consonant y we studied two such sutras vanto y pratyaye and dhato stan nimittasyaiva 6179 and 6180 these are the additional rules and now we shall study two more additional rules but before going there let us quickly study the main sutra stating the san ayavayav sandhi which is echo ayavayavah echo ayavayavah has got two words in it echah and ayavayavah this is 6178 echah is 61 of h 
meaning in place of h. Ayavayavaha is 1 slash 3 of Ayavayav. H is a pratyahara formed by capturing the sounds that appear in sutras 4 and 5 in the pratyahara sutras. So there are four sounds which are part of H, namely A, O, I and O. And Ayavayav has got four substitutes, I, Av, I and Av. Achi is continued and so Achoyavayavaha means immediately before Ach, that is a vowel, H is substituted by I, Av, I and Av respectively. <clears throat> On this background, let us study the additional sutra Kshaya Jayau Shakyarthe. But before going there, we must remember one thing. As far as Echo Yavayavaha is concerned, the right hand side environment is Ach. Then we saw two sutras, Vantoye Pratyaye and Dhatos Tannimittasyaiva, in which the right hand side environment is not Ach. The right hand side environment is a Pratyaya that begins with consonant Ya. And this same right hand side environment in the form of a Pratyaya that begins with Ya continues even in 6181 Kshaya Jayau Shakyarthi where we see that the domain of application of this sutra gets further contracted both in terms of the meaning that is conveyed and also the word forms that are generated. We noted that in 6180 Dhatos Tannimit Tasyeva the scope of the sutra was contracted to the Dhatu. Now in this sutra that is further contracted and restricted only to two dhatus, kshi and ji. So in this sutra, there are two words, kshaya jayau, which is one slash two of kshaya jaya, and shakyarthe, which is seven slash one, which means in the sense of possible to do, shakya. So the meaning of this sutra, overall meaning is this. Kshaya and Jaya are the forms having the Aya substitution in place of A when conditioned by the suffix beginning with Ya immediately following in the sense of possible to slay or destroy and possible to win. Once again, Kshaya and Jaya are the forms having the I substitution in place of A when conditioned by the suffix beginning with ya immediately following in the sense of possible to slay or destroy and also possible to win. Here are the examples. Here we have kshi plus ya to begin with and kshi is substituted by kshe because of this year. So this year is added by 3197 and then by 7384 because of this year Kshi becomes Kshe. So E is substituted by A. So this A is conditioned by this suffix year. In such a case this A gets substituted by a year. And so we have Kshaya plus year kshaya, something that can be slain or that can be destroyed. As opposed to kshaya, which means something that should be destroyed and not something that can be destroyed. So the derivation process ordinarily would stop at this stage, kshe plus ya. There is no sutra prescribing this a to be substituted by Aya. Vanto yi pratyaye states that O and Au only are substituted by Av and Av when immediately followed by a suffix that begins with Ya. 
There isn't any sutra which states aya and aya as the substitutes in place of a and i. Now in this case only a vowel is substituted by aya in both these cases. So we notice the contraction of the overall scope of application of this particular sutra. Such sutras are called Nipatana Sutras because they are too specific. So these two examples, they denote something special, some specific meaning, so that some specific meaning acts as the domain of operation of this rule and also the word form which is pertaining to two roots, Kshi and Ji. So the, this is a Nipatana Sutra in terms of meaning and also in terms of the form. So Kshaya is a form that is generated in the sense of Shakya, something that can be destroyed. And Kshaya is another form that can be generated, but that will mean something that should be destroyed and not something that can be destroyed. There is a shade of difference of meaning in these two words and their meanings. Similarly, we have G plus Y and G is substituted by J. In fact, E is substituted by A because of this Y suffix. This is once again stated by 3197 and because of this Y this E becomes A by 7384 and now there isn't any sutra which states I as the substitute in place of this A and so this sutra comes into play and substitutes A by I and so we have Jaya plus Y and so we get the form Jaya meaning something that can be conquered as opposed to jaya, if we stop here, because there isn't any other rule that applies at this particular stage, so the finally derived output would be jaya, but then that would mean something that should be conquered, and jaya would not mean something that can be conquered. There is difference of meaning, the shade of these meanings is different, something that should be conquered and something that can be conquered. Kshayam papam jayam manaha. That is the line stated in Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi. Kshayam papam, papa, is something that should be destroyed. It is always not possible to destroy it, but that should be destroyed. And jayam manaha, mind, is something that should be conquered. However, it is not possible to conquer it but it should be conquered. So we have the word Jaya, Jaya means something that can be conquered. So if you have a sentence in which the word Jaya, jaya is used like a Jaya, a Jaya Shakti for example, here it means Shakti or the strength which cannot be conquered, a Jaya Shakti, something that can be conquered something that cannot be conquered, a jaya. The explanation is this, the verbal roots kshi to destroy or to slay and ji to conquer appear immediately before a suffix that begins with consonant y. The a substitute in the verbal roots kshi to destroy or to slay and ji to conquer is caused by this particular suffix that begins with the consonant Y. In such a case now, the substitute that ends in Y in place of A, which in this case is a Y, takes place in a limited domain of meaning. Kshaya Jayau Shakyarthe, in the sense of Shakya. So once again, we state that Kshaya Jayau Shakyarthe applies in a very, very limited domain of meaning as well as the words.
नाउ वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट सूत्र क्रैयस्त दर्थे सिक्स वन एटी टू दिस इज लाइक द प्रीवियस सूत्र सिक्स वन एटी वन अनदर निपातन सूत्र द मीनिंग ऑफ क्रैयस तदर्थ इज द फॉलोइंग क्रैयस इज वन स्लैश वन ऑफ क्रैय तदर्थे इज सेवन स्लैश वन ऑफ तदर्थ तदर्थ मीन्स इन द सेंस ऑफ दैट इन द सेंस ऑफ दैट वर्बल रूट so the meaning of the sutra is the word kriya is derived by adding the suffix ya to the verbal root kri to buy in the sense of something that is to be bought for something worth buying the word derived from the verbal root kri by adding the suffix ya would be kriya so kriya and kriya even though are derived by adding the suffix here to the verbal root kri do mean different things kriya means something that is to be bought and kriya means something worth buying the shade of difference of meaning is visible here is an explanation so here we have the derivation process where we take the verbal root kri and add the suffix year to it by 3197 then by 7384 this cre is substituted by cre where a is the substitute in place of e and so we have cre plus year now the derivation process actually stops here because there isn't any rule which states the substitution i in place of a at this stage however 6182 comes into play and says that substitute this a because this is part of the verbal root kri and a particular meaning is also intended so this kri is to be substituted by kriya a is to be substituted by aya and so we get the form kriya plus ya kriya something that is bought and kriya if we stop just here kri plus ya will mean something that should be bought or that or that is worth buying the explanation is this the verbal root kri appears immediately before a suffix that begins with consonant y the a in kri the a which is the substitute in the verbal root is caused by this suffix that begins with consonant y in such a case the substitute that ends in ya in place of a which is aya takes place so this happens in a limited domain of meaning as well as very narrow very limited domain of the word the meaning is tadartha and the domain of the word is just the verbal root kri and nothing else after having studied these two nipatana sutras which act as exceptions to echo yavayavaha in terms of the environment which is right hand side environment and of course the meaning now we should study towards the end of our limited study of ayavayav sandhi the interrelation of sutras interrelation of sutras namely engah padanta adati lopashakalyasya and halantyam with h o y v y a v a let us take each sutra one by one first let us study the interrelation of engah padanta dati 61109 with h o y v y a v a the sutra engah padanta dati we shall study when we study the second type of achandhi namely dvisthanika ekadesha in detail later on this is the purva rupa sandhi stating sutra enga padantad ati what it means is in brief in place of both eng and a appears one substitute the earlier stated one that is purva rupa when this eng appears at the end of a pad followed immediately by a short a i repeat in place of both eng and a appears one substitute the earlier stated one purva rupa when eng appears at the end of a pad 
followed immediately by a short a. Remember short a. So we have this is the pada, earlier pada, at the end of which appears aing. Before that, there are some sounds. And this pada is followed by the other pada, at the beginning of which is short a, remember, not any other a, short a, followed by some other sounds. Then in this case, the sutra 61109 would apply and the output generated would be aing. That's all. And this a is not there. So we have only aing. So aing is one substitute in place of aing plus a. And the concrete examples are of this kind. We have hare as another pada and ava as another pada. Both of them coming close in close proximity in the samhita mode. And so now we have a situation where a which is part of aing is coming at the end of one pada. So this is at the, this is padanta followed by a. And so now 61109 applies. And in place of this a and a, we have just one a over here. So the output generated primarily is her a v. To show the boundaries, we can say that this is hare plus v, the output generated. That is hare v. Similarly, Vishnu plus ava, where o appears at the end of a pada. Vishnu is another pada, ava is another pada. They come into close proximity in the samhita mode. So o, which is padanta, is immediately followed by a, and so 61109 applies. And here we have Vishnu ending in consonant. O coming in place of O and A followed by V. Now if we show the Pada boundary, we can show that Vishnu as the previous Pada and V as the next Pada. Joining together we get Vishnu V. O Vishnu protect, O Hari protect. That is the meaning of these words. Now in this case, if we observe closely, we have A. In this case, we have A followed by A. In this case, we have O followed by A. The scope of application of HO Yava Yavaha as well. Now, this particular rule 61109 requires some special conditions. HO Yava Yavaha requires H immediately followed by H, that's all. But this sutra 61109 requires not H but aing, which is part of H. This also requires that this aing appears at the end of a pada. And this also requires that the following vowel is short a and not any kind of ach. We noted that ho yavaha requires h. There is no condition that it should be at the end of a pada. It can be at the end of a pada or it can be within a pada. And any ach is the right hand side environment for HO Yava Yavaha. But for 61109, some specifics, some special conditions are required. All this makes the domain of application of this particular rule 61109 much shorter than 6179. And in this shorter domain, 61179 does not apply. So this is how Engap Padantadati is interrelated with HO Yava Yavaha. Now let us look at the second sutra, Shlopashakalyasya, and its interrelation with HO Yava Yavaha. Lopashakalyasya means Y and V appearing at the end of a pada and preceded by short A or long A, any A and immediately followed by a sound mentioned in the Pratyahara Ash. So this Y and V is deleted according to Shakalya. Shakalya is the name of a grammarian. According to Shakalya, this Y and V appearing at the end of a pada 
and preceded by a whether it is short or long and immediately followed by a sound mentioned in the pratyahara ash this year and v is deleted according to shakalya and the tradition says that because the sutra mentions the word shakalya and according to shakalya these via and v are to be deleted in the specific environment so according to panini these year and v are not to be deleted overall this results in the optional deletion of year and v in these environments just to note that the word ash stands for all vowels plus semi vowels plus consonants 5 4 and 3 plus consonant h so all these they are covered in the first 10 sutras in the pratyahar sutras to put it in the form of an equation and show some examples we can say that if aya aya av and av appears at the end of a pad so they are preceded by some sounds okay so this year comes at the end of a pad preceded by a year comes at the end of a pad and preceded by a and obviously there are previous sounds and all these are followed by another pad at the beginning of which comes ash then the output generated is twofold once you have year deleted and were deleted so a a a and a plus ash or as it is aya aya av av plus ash this would be the resultant form optional deletion for example we have already seen this example vartate so a comes at the end of this pad followed by asha where a comes at the beginning of this pad so 6178 applies and this a is substituted by aya so we have vartataya plus asha and now by the application of 8319 this year will be optionally dropped so we have vartat asha and we have studied several examples of this kind when we looked at specific examples of ho yava yava here are some of them labhate plus ishtam here we have a followed by e and 6178 applies a is at the end of a pad e is at the beginning of a pad e is ash and so we have e is also ach and so we have ho yava yava applying and the output generated is labhataya ishtam now in this case here comes at the end of a pad preceded by short a followed by e that is ash and so this year according to shakalya gets optionally deleted that is labhata ishtam and according to panini it is not deleted so we have labhata ya ishtam both these forms are generated similarly vartate ishvaraha here we have a coming at the end of a pad followed by long e at the beginning of the second pad and so ho yava yava applies we get vartataya plus ishvaraha as the output and in this case year coming at the end of a pad preceded by short a followed by e that is ash so 8319 applies and this year gets optionally deleted so we get two forms vartataya ishvaraha or vartata ishvaraha similarly we have vartai followed by asha where we have i coming at the end of the pad followed by a so ho yava yava applies and we had vartai plus asha and so this year coming at the end of a pad preceded by a long a in this case followed by a that is ash so this year gets deleted by the view of shakalya and according to the view of panini it is not deleted so we have these two forms vartay asha and varta asha what is important to remember over here is that 8319 
requires the output of 6178 as input. The output of 6178 namely HO Yavayavaha is an input to 8319. Then this 8319 modifies that input and generates an optional output. Now this optional output is not visible to any rule in 61 for example. And this is stated by Purvatra Siddham 821. So what do we do? So we do not apply any other rule to this output of 8319 even though the scope of application of another rule is visible to us that scope of application is not visible to the other rule within the system as per the systemic rule 821. So in Varta and Asha where you have A followed by A which is the scope of application of 61101 we still do not apply 61101 and do not generate Vartasha. This is not generated. This is not desirable. This is very important as far as the interrelation between 8319 and 6178 is concerned. And now the interrelation between 6178 and 132. 132 is Halantyam. What it states is that any consonant at the end of an element in the original enunciation is termed a marker or it and then it is deleted by 139. Tasya Lopaha. I repeat, 132 Halantyam says that any consonant at the end of an element in the original enunciation is termed a marker or it and is deleted by 139. Now this rule and the term it is not applied to ya and wa which appear at the end of the substitutes stated by 6178 H O Yava Yavaha Aya Av Aya and Av. The main reason is that there is no purpose for them being marked as it. No operation is stated making ya and wa markers as triggers. So there is no point in giving them the itsaudnya and therefore deleting them. This is an explanation offered by the later Paninian grammatical tradition. This is the interrelation between Halantyam and H O Yavayavaha. To summarize what we have studied so far in terms of Ayavayav Sandhi is the following. We studied the second instance namely Ayavayav Sandhi of the first classification namely Ekasthanika Ekadesha of the vowel Sandhi in detail. We studied the sutra stating this particular Ayavayav Sandhi. We studied the meaning of these sutras, their implications their examples and also the exceptions. We also studied the interrelation of sutras in this particular regard. Notable amongst them is Lopashakalyasya, which is stated in the Asiddha Kanda, which modifies the output of H.O. Yavayavaha and the output of Lopashakalyasya is not visible to the earlier sutras. So we do not apply other Sandhi rules on the output of Lopashakalyasya. Now hereafter we study the second classification of vowel Sandhi namely Dvisthanika Ekadesha. Two substituents and one substitute. This we shall study from the next lecture onwards. Thank you very much.